South Africa, from a marine point of view, is incredibly fortunate. We have a very long coastline of over three and a half thousand kilometers. And within that coastline, we have a number of bioregions. So these are environments that specifically have very defined habitats. So I'll go Bay and the regions around it, which are in the Agulhas bioregion, is particularly rich in marine biodiversity and especially so with the marine organisms on the ocean floor. Um, the sponges and sea squirts and corals and soft corals, etc. And specifically the bacteria that live with them, so their microbes. And it's really important that we, we acknowledge how important that biodiversity is because the more biodiversity you have, the better your chances are of discovering something new. So to explain the sea to laboratory process, we go out into the field and then we use equipment known as remote operating vehicles or ROVs. And the ROV has really good camera equipment and video equipment and we can then use that to identify sponges or sea squirts or organisms that are down there that are potentially of interest for us for research purposes. And then we use a robotic arm on the ROV so that we can specifically collect the specimens we're interested in in a non-destructive way without damaging the reef habitats. And we also make sure that we're not taking the only, the only specimen that is there. And then we also take samples for a DNA analysis. And the DNA that we isolate is used to potentially identify the, the genes that the bacterium uses to make those, that chemistry. We call it gene mining. We will then use genetic engineering to see whether we can persuade a bacterium that grows in the laboratory, such as Escherichia coli, our gut bacterium, and persuade this bacterium to produce the compounds we're interested in the lab. And the compounds we have are also screened in our collaborating labs for anti-cancer activity and for potential inhibitory activity against malaria and other parasites. So the compounds that we get from the sea those don't necessarily end up in the pharmacy, but what they do is they give us ideas about what kind of compound can be used to target these diseases so that we can go into the lab and develop these ideas into fully fledged pharmaceutical compounds that can be tested and put into clinical trials. Hi, I'm Jazz and I'm a PhD student researching natural product development at the University of Plymouth. My main focus is on deep sea sponges and their diverse microbial communities with the view to discover novel bacterial species with bioactive molecules to solve medical challenges such as antimicrobial resistance. We work alongside the marine biologists. Essentially, they collect and preserve the specimen. We then process the specimen in a way that enables us to access the microbial communities within. We then select bacteria of interest based upon morphology, size, texture, and color of the colonies that grow on the agar plates. Bacteria can take many forms. Over the past few years, we have seen a rise in bacterial infections that are becoming increasingly difficult to treat. This is due to the bacteria being able to mutate and survive against the antibiotic that would have originally killed them. This bacteria can then pass on the mutation to other bacteria, over time causing the antibiotic to become less effective. Therefore, our role is to find alternative antibiotics to treat these bacterial infections. <laughs> 